The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And as he came to her and said, Hail, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying, and considered in her mind what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. And he will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no husband? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, Therefore the child to be born will be called holy, the Son of God. And behold, your kinswoman Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God nothing will be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord, let it be unto me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. I love all the music we're singing tonight. I was joking with Father Wilson in the back when I said, you know, if no one came, we'd still have this, and he and I would be singing these hymns together out here. Today is a very special day. Today... Amid the season of Lent, we take a step out of man's time and enter briefly into God's time, into the eternal nature of timelessness. Today we get to have a little bit of Christmas, just before we celebrate Good Friday and Easter, the death and resurrection of our Lord. Today we get a peak into heaven by hearing about the relationship between Mary and God. We get a peek into heaven because we see and we read about Mary fully receiving the will of God. I think it's a wonderful thing to have various prayers memorized. It makes those prayers accessible at any time. It enables us to call upon God using timeless words and gives us the words when we are lost and cannot find them. One thing about knowing prayers that well is that sometimes we lose some of the intimacy with the prayer because of the familiarity. The Lord's Prayer is an example of this. What Jesus teaches us in the Lord's Prayer is astonishing. 
It's transforming. It's a prayer given to us by God himself. Today, I want us all to consider the phrase, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When we say, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, we are praying to God to help us to bring our wills in line with the will of God. We are asking God to help us to be in love with him, to be enraptured by his grace, to live with perfect joy because of our total faith and reliance on God. In the gospel today, the angel says to Mary, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And Mary's answer, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Let it be to me according to your word. That is a synonymous statement to thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What does it look like when we submit to God's will? Mary's acceptance of God's call causes her to risk everything. Her very being, her life, her future marriage, her reputation, and the reputation of her family. What Mary does is exactly what we would pray to do every time we pray the Lord's Prayer. Mary is the model of on earth as it is in heaven. Mary is our model for a relationship with God. Her response to God is what we should all strive for in our responses to God in our lives. Now I realize what I've just said is setting a lofty goal for all of us. One that we are all bound to fail at. And perhaps I've even preached myself into a corner. One of the great problems in the church today, one that is a modern problem, is the idea that we will make our society here on earth as it is in heaven through our determination. Did you catch that? Through our determination not through the power of God, not through total trust in the Lord. Our true call is one of submission and not self-determination. With that in mind, let me open the hidden door in the corner I've preached myself into to show us the way out. When Mary accepts the call from God to be the Theotokos, the God-bearer, she is not willing herself to take God into her, her womb. She's not willing herself to take God into her womb. She is submitting to the will of God, to God's call. She's allowing the Holy Spirit to do the will of the Father by having the Word of God take the flesh of Mary and become her child. What does that submission mean for her? It, may, it means she may be stoned to death for becoming pregnant before marrying Joseph. It means a marriage where her son is raised by a man who is not his biological father, 
and all the complications that arise from that. It means others in her family will not understand Jesus and go on to question if he is out of his mind or worse, possessed by the devil. It means Mary will become a vagabond disciple of her son and watch and listen as some choose to follow him while others plot to kill him. It means she will witness her son tried and found guilty in a sham trial, beaten by Roman soldiers and eventually killed on a cross like a common criminal. It means that she will witness God's will being done on earth as it is in heaven. To pray thy will be done is not to pray that somehow we will enforce the goodness of God on others. To pray thy will be done is not to force doctrine on others especially when that doctrine refuses to allow God to act and instead insists on human action. To pray thy will be done is to say to God, let it be done to me according to your word. It is to acknowledge that no matter what happens in our lives, we are to worship and humble ourselves before God by loving each other so that the world knows that we are disciples of Jesus. By humbling ourselves before the Lord and before each other, by loving each other sacrificially, whether it be another person or God, to love another is to give of self for the other. Mary did this in accepting the call to be the mother of Jesus. Jesus did this by accomplishing the will of the Father, the atonement on the cross. Whatever the world throws at us, remember our answer to God. Let it be done to me according to your word. Our prayer to God for the world is, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Not my will be done, not my group's will be done, but God's will be done. God's will is that we may all be one and that we are all made new through the blood of Jesus. I pray that we all accept God's will in our lives. I pray that each of us may wake up each day with the prayer be it unto me according to thy word on our lips. None of us will live up to the standard of Mary. But shouldn't we still strive to be the God-bearers of our generation? Shouldn't we let the world know Jesus simply by following his commandment to love God first and to give of self in love for our neighbors. Be it unto me, according to thy word. Amen.